Hey, this is Mark the Malicious Carp, and I'm coming at you with a very special success or fail video. Uh, today I'm going to be trying to upgrade the spinner in my Atari 12-in-1 Arcade 1-Up. And this is a special video for SamCon 2, the only anime and video game convention that is virtual for Friends of Sam. So the uh, the kit that I bought, well it's not really a kit, you have to order two separate pieces. There's a Arcade 1-Up 12-in-1 uh, interface uh, daughter board and it comes with a little uh, schematic and instructions on how to plug it in. And then you have to order the spinner separately. Uh, together these were about $65 uh, off Amazon. Um, this, I haven't unboxed either of these yet, so this is the, uh, I think it's Glenn's Retro Show, um, kit that, uh, he made special. So it's, it's using a, uh, a USB spinner. Oh, there we go. Yeah, and it comes with a little card saying that's been modified for arcade one-up machines. So... Uh, there's a board that I believe you use if you have the um, Tempest machine, the one that's not the 12 in one. Uh, looks like it comes with a wiring harness, um, a metal disc of some sort. I'll have, to, I'll have to watch an installation video before I actually give this a go. Oh. But yeah, there's there's the unit itself. Ooh, that's really nice. And then it comes with a nice, oh, very heavy spinner knob. Uh, so the problem with the arcade one up is the uh, rotary control is a dial. It clicks into each position, and there's no momentum behind your spins. Uh, so it's not a true spinner, which is okay for Tempest. Uh, actually, I kind of like it for Tempest because you can uh, click around the side without going too far, but it does change the feel of the game. Uh, but then for Major Havoc, uh, that game actually relies on having momentum behind your spin to get through the maze parts. And uh, with the, the dial control that comes stock, it's almost impossible. So I am going to uh, do a quick review of the installation video um, that uh, he talks about in the instructions. And I am going to give this a go. Alright, before I get going on this, let's talk about the stock spinner. Uh, this is the stock dial. And... So you can hear it's, it's definitely more harsh on one side of the dial, uh, but it's clicking into place all the way around. And so if you try to spin it, you're, you're not going to get any momentum. Uh, a spinner in Tempest and Major Havoc should actually glide for a while and have a little bit of, a little bit of inertia and, and let you really turn. You can whale on this thing all you want and it's still just going to click where, where you leave it. So that's why this upgrade is needed. Uh, the trackball on the other hand, it's on the small side, um, but I actually quite like it. it. It has some nice glide to it. It feels like a, a if you remember those old uh, uh, Wicko trackballs for uh, back in the like uh, Commodore um, it feels a lot like that. It's it's um, kind of nice and weighted, and you get a little bit of a uh, little bit of momentum when you turn it. But it, it's certainly not as as heavy as the uh, the real arcade ones. But it actually feels really nice. So um, this is the uh, one that makes this uh, this unit uh, somewhat unplayable. <laughs> so here we go. All right, the first step is going to be to just take off these four screws on the control panel, if I can... Get this done quick. 
The next upgrade, if this works well, the next upgrade I'm going to do is I'm going to get the uh, new overlay and plexiglass for this one. Mine just has the sticker. Uh, so far it hasn't been a problem, but I'd like to get it protected. Okay, Space Invaders here will lovingly hold them for me. And then with those, those screws out, this should lift off. And then you have a big old ribbon cable. Let's see. Ooh, that's being kind of stubborn. There we go. All right, with that, we have the board. All right, now that we have the board out, we can start here, um, there's this cover here that has six screws to come out. Uh, I'm not going to make you sit through that. Okay, with the cover off, here's the uh, underside of the control board in all its glory. Uh, as you can see, the spinner currently um, is just spliced into the same cable as the trackball. And that's why this uh, little uh, control board is, is needed and then that just plugs in to right here. And so what I'm going to have to do is take the spinner out and install the new spinner, stick the uh, control board here, and then the trackball and the spinner both go into that board and then that board goes there. Of course if I have room I'll probably mount on this side because there's a lot more space. And I really would like to have this cover back on. because. Uh, I think the cover actually looks pretty good. So, first step is to get this guy out of here. So, let's see here. There's one. and there's the rotary knob in all its glory and then this um, is the oh, just kind of holds the knob in place it would be a really good design if the games were meant to be played that way but the fact that there's no um no momentum on your spins and you can't turn it fast makes those uh, makes major havoc especially unplayable Oop. yeah I know I'm off camera this is a lot harder than being in my workbench Okay, there we go. Alright, so there's the top half of the evil spinner mechanism. Here's the bottom part. And now... Now I have to make a decision. Do you cut this cable or do you just leave it hanging? Well, I guess if I want to remove this, I have to cut the cable. And then this would become the trackball cable. So I'll be right back. All right. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this and leave a little bit hanging in case it needs to be resoldered. But there we go. There is the old clicker dial control. And it is ready for the new majestic spinner.
Okay, so that just should drop right in there. And that has a set screw that goes on at the end. So I think um, I think pretty universal. Everyone's saying you can just use the stock uh, screw holes to mount this without problem. So I think I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to take a look and see where this will fit in the grand scheme of things. Okay, that's kind of a short cord, so I might not be able to mount it where I want. Well, at least they do a good job packaging it. What are those cutters? Ha ha ha! Cut! Okay. Okay, so, see, originally I wanted to have it here, but there's no way that cord will reach. So, it's going to have to be nestled down here. Yeah, that'll be fine. That'll be just fine. Okay, so, I... Kind of surprised it didn't come with some double-sided uh, tape or something. I want to make a sticky pad for it uh, just because, and I'll be right back. Okay, this is a brand new segment called Malicious Carp Fails at Improvising. So I'm going to take this ordinary piece of foam that came with the uh, spinner. I'm going to peel off the bottom. I am going to cut a corner. I cut every corner. We should know that by now. Okay, I have that. Then I have some ordinary double-sided tape. And yes, I know foam tape is one of the cheapest things you can buy, but guess what? I don't have any. And I'm not about to go to the store. Okay. And this can go on there, and it can mount right there. Now it doesn't have to be solid, it doesn't have to be anything except it just has to stay there long enough for me to not see it fall off um, when I put it back together. Okay, so then the next step is to mount the new spinner hardware, and I'm going to put it this way so that the it's nice and close as possible to where it's running to, and I need to find that original screw hole, there they are. And again, everyone online, even the creator of this product, is saying that the original screw holes are just fine and dandy for this. Uh, they recommend not screwing more because this should be a perfectly cromulent fit. Now, apparently, the spinner has a dip switch on it, and you can tweak its settings somehow. Uh, I want to leave them at default, uh, because I don't know what I'm looking at. And I'm hoping that... There we go. I'm hoping that just leaving it alone will be... Uh, will be the right setting, because I'm always terrible at tweaking that sort of thing. Okay, so then... The trackball plugs into one.
Oh, that kit actually comes with a uh, with a little uh, Allen wrench too. Um, I can't talk and do stuff at the same time. It actually comes with a little wrench to uh, put on the top so I don't have to go dig out one of mine. Yay! Okay, there's that. Now, I'm not going to worry about that too much right now. And then, that plugs in there. So it's, it's not just plug and play, it's cut plug and play. There we go. And frankly, that should be all. You know what? I don't like the fact that that goes in the speaker. Uh, maybe I will. Maybe I will tie it down. This zip tie is definite overkill. There we go. There we go. Now it's not poking the speaker. Yet all those wires are. Okay. So I'm going to leave the back plate off while I test it. And then uh, once it's tested, I'll put the back plate on. So stand by. All right. So I have my board here, and let's see, it's going to go on like that. Oh, okay, good. That's keyed, so it only goes in one way. I'm always a little nervous about that. Like, how cheap did they go with their design? Okay. Here we go. Okay, let's see. Ready? Oh my. Oh, that's awesome. And the trackball's working too. Whoa, that is, that is smooth. Let's see. Um, so everyone uses Tempest to test this thing, and I am no different. Now you'll notice my screen flashing. That's just an issue that mine's always had. It goes away after a bit, um, and it doesn't really bother me. So I've never addressed it, but it does kind of worry me sometimes. <laughs> okay, here we go. Insert a coin. Oh, that is smooth. One finger. Nice. Okay. That's how I remember Tempest in the arcade. Alright, I'm going to go button this thing back up and uh, we'll see what, uh, what I think of it. Okay, a quick aside here. Whenever I have something like this opened up, I see that there's all this open space inside. And I always think I should put something in there as a little Easter egg to myself for next time I open it. So this time I'm going to put my WWF uh, uh, muscle figures in there, including the Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh yeah! And, with my bad memory, I'll certainly forget about them. Next time I open it up, it'll be a total surprise. Now is the time I would ask Paul Schaefer to play me some putting a cover back on music. Since he's not here though, you'll just have to ask some, uh, you'll just have to live with hearing some heavy breathing and, uh, 
minor screwing and screw noises. Wee! Could this be any more exciting? Watching me struggle, lose a fight against an ordinary screw. This can't be off that much, can it? Oh yeah, it can be. Wow. Okay. Two of six. We are now inserting screw three of six. We are now inserting screw Four of six. And this is where I scratch up my sticker and finally make it so I have to buy the upgraded overlay. I kind of, I hope they're still available. I should probably order one before they decide to quit selling them. My Space Invaders arcade one up here has it, has the upgraded overlay and it is so nice. I kind of wish they would have just come with them by default. But one cool thing about Arcade 1UP is you can definitely see their product evolve as they went on. They, they didn't just kind of pick a design and say good enough. Um, every generation they, they kind of worked in some upgrades to address common complaints. And I, I really respect that. I thought that they were going to be a fly-by-night company that would kind of do their one and done. They'd release a few machines and then just kind of disappear, but um, they've actually been somewhat dedicated to improving and getting new licenses and stuff, so I'm actually kind of impressed. Okay, so now Let's see, this goes in this way, and now I'll plug it in and get it all buttoned up, and something will work, because that's how, that's how things work for me. Okay, here we go. Fire her up again. And just kind of one last test to make sure. Okay, spinner's working. Trackball's working. Buttons seem to work. Okay. I want to put the four screws in, adjust the camera, and then give a little bit of gameplay and review. All right, here we go. Here is the new spinner on the Arcade 1UP uh, Atari 12-in-1. Oh, look at that. That glides so nice. And 
and the trackball's still working. So I'm going to give it a pour shot at Major Havoc here. Oops. Uh-oh. What's going on here? There we go. Okay, first you play Arkanoid. Oh! Fish ships. Okay, here's the real test. Oh no, I got zapped. Okay, come on. Oh. Ah, man, this is, plays like a completely different game. Here we go. No! Oh, I got zapped. Oh no! <laughs> oh boy. Well, it didn't do anything to improve my playing ability, but uh, man. Okay. Oh no, too far, too far. Leading cause of death for me. <laughs> okay, let's go back and do uh, some Tempest. Because I'm uh, a lot more familiar with that game. Here we go. Whoa. Okay, well, look at that. That was not at all possible with the old spinner. So I give this a hearty thumbs up. <laughs>